Hey everyone and welcome to Creative Suite TV. In this episode we're going to be having a look at Adobe Bridge CS6, Adobe Photoshop CS6 but more importantly uh, the Camera Raw plugin that comes along with both of those, the Camera Raw 7 uh, plugin and there's been some terrific enhancements to that I'm going to show you how to use those. First of all in uh, Bridge here you can see I have three images uh, adjusted slightly differently. It's actually the same camera raw file which is a Nikon camera raw file, a .nef file. Um, this is the original over here on the left hand side and then two adjusted versions of it on the right and we're going to talk through how to do those. First of all before we do that though let's have a, a, a good close look at it. This is the original and you can see the shadow area in the foreground uh, underexposed so needs a bit of work there and of course the highlight area up near the clouds and the snow there is overexposed and we've lost a bit of detail. So I went ahead and adjusted that with the Camera Raw plugin of CS5 um, and uh, we made some great enhancements to it. Uh, much better looking image, a lot more detail in there, even in the clouds, sky, etc. Um, good adjustment. Better adjustment though with Camera Raw 7. Uh, using some of the new sliders. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So this is the old process. This is the new process. Let's have a look at that. What we'll do though is start with the original. So I'm just going to double click that in um, in Bridge there and that will uh, bring up the Camera Raw plugin. Just a, an aside actually before I even, even do that we'll jump back over to Bridge. If you have a JPEG file that you want to adjust you can always just right click and uh, and then we can uh, open in Camera Raw straight from there. So it doesn't need to be a Camera Raw file. You can do a TIFF or a JPEG. Uh, alternatively, you can click this little fellow up here, uh, the Open in Camera Raw button. So just an extra uh, bonus mega tip for you. Anyway, back to where we were. So we open this in Camera Raw. Um, here's the histogram up here. And as we suspected, yes. Uh, very much bogged in uh, in the shadow area on the histogram. Let's zoom in and have a look. And also in the highlight area, we're bogged in there. <coughs> Excuse me. If we come over to the calibration or the camera calibration tab uh, right here in the adjustments, you can see the process is set to 2012 or the current process. If we switch it back to 2010, this is where we see the differences. Um, even more blown out. So you can see the 2010 process on the histogram comp compared to the 2012 process much better. Okay, back to the adjustments. Here's the difference. Let's let's zoom in. Exposure is the same. We have two sliders here: recovery and fill light, both starting at the zero point. So we we're able to recover highlights back up up this way with the recovery slide. So we bring back in detail into the highlights. And the fill light will bring up the shadow area. And as I adjust that, you can see I'm bringing up detail into the shadow area. This is where the differences are. So if we come over now to the current process, back in the camera calibration, and now back to the basic adjustments, now it's all different. You can see instead of recovery and fill light, we have highlight and shadow. So let's see how that works. We get the highlight slider and we can do both a negative and a positive adjustment, whereas uh, previously it was set as recovery way back to the left. Even if I do drag this way back to the left, have a look at the amount of detail that I can bring back into that highlight area that previously was just not possible. So this is super exciting for us. Um, now what we can see is a lot more detail in this area. It's actually a lot truer to form um, and it alleviates that real super high contrast you get when of course you're shooting with snow and a little bit of sun and clouds etc. On the shadow slider which was previously called the fill light we also both have a negative and a positive adjustment. This makes it a heck of a lot more flexible. So I can drag this shadow, I'm going to call it shadow recovery, way back up and then you can see we're bringing in all of that detail. Now, because we've neutralized some of that contrast, it does look a little bit flatter here. Never fear, we can adjust that. 
if I get the clarity, you can think of the clarity slider as perhaps mid-tone contrast. And as I drag this up, we can bring this up and get a really uh, like a HDR type looking image very, very quickly by using this clarity slider. And again, if we want to pump some color, if we'd like it to sort of desaturate the color, we can do that. But if we want to pump the color up through those mid-tones as well, bring the vibrance slider up and hallelujah, this is an amazing photograph. So we've gone from um, zero to hero very, very quickly. A huge amount of difference in the Camera Raw plugin. Uh, the update is a special one. You can see I'm running the uh, Camera Raw 7.1 uh, plugin for Photoshop CS6. This is a Nikon D70. That's my tutorial for today. But I've decided I'm going to leave you with a very special superpower mega tip uh, at the end for those of people hanging around. Right down the bottom here, you'll notice uh, when I go to open this in Photoshop, I have open object. Well, normally it doesn't say open object, and the way we change that is, is thusly. There's a little uh, link, like a link down the bottom here that tells us all the detail about this image, and we can click that. What we can do is tell Photoshop to, or tell the Camera Raw plugin, to open this image in Photoshop as a smart object. And that can be the default, you see. So when I press OK, the open image turns to open object. We can hold down a modifier key, the shift key, and turn it to open image. And that just means it's going to open in Photoshop as pixels. If it's open object, it will open in Photoshop as a smart object layer with the camera raw data saved into it. So I have opened this in Photoshop. You'll notice over here in my layers, if you're astutely watching, there's the layers there. It's a smart object layer. There's a whole bunch of new layer searching capabilities over here as well. That's for another day. It's embedded the camera raw file. So if I want to edit that, I double click it opens back in the camera raw. That's not the original. That's the copy in my new file. It's excellent. It's the new camera raw 7 plugin comes with Photoshop CS6. What a wonderful tip. Thanks for joining us again on Creative Suite TV and hopefully we'll see you again real soon.